we are going to our bulletin is going to be heavily uh, heavily um, concentrated on the budget but headquarters in the capital met the news of scrapping levies on their business with excitement and jubilation however several months on the headquarters say the excitement is not being short-lived as many anticipated as government announces the 2018 budget today some of the headquarters shared their expectations with GH1 news over 200 registered headquarters, popularly known as Kayaye, live and operate in the Malata market. Most of them have migrated from the northern part of the country in search of greener pastures due to economic hardship in their home regions. Unlike the spare parts dealers at the Abosokai market, who say the tax relief by government has done very little to improve their operations, these headquarters say they are forever grateful to the Akufuado administration. Meet Nafisa Moru, a 24-year-old headquarter in this market. Nafisa usually moves through the market just like any other Kayayu to bid for loads to carry in order to eke out a living. She says she's been doing this business since she was 15 years. Nafisa followed one of her aunties from the northern region to Accra in search of a job. Nafisa said they now operate without having to bother about payment of levies. She talked about her expectations ahead of Wednesday's budget reading. <laughs> So, for now, first, and the Unia won't know. So, to me, back round yet, I don't clamp on so much, but two, I think, and I must say this old chap. But I said, more kind than I send it. Omunia be Omunia be Nafisa is not alone in this business. Some of her colleagues also spoke to the news team. Entiatic TV na a year can a sign for a mark a German and a yen ye be, and car yen ye be a sank a boy. And in the capital of the Ashanti region, residents have also been sharing their own expectations with GH1 News. Well, my expectation for the budget is that uh, I expect the government or the MPP government to give us the details, policies of what they are going to do to improve agriculture. This is because the minority has raised an issue that uh, maybe in the coming years or within the next four years of MPP time, uh, we are going to have what we had in 1981. That is the decline in agriculture uh, that brought famine in Ghana here. So they are thinking that based on the policies that the MPP government is introducing, definitely our agri system or the agri sector will collapse during the four-year tenure of MPP government. So I expect the finance minister to highlight more on that. Be free, wasana mi bay. Akwe oho ni nani? Sebiwe akwe oho ya faso. Any uh said ye are crumfusi tata or more hona. Medi a mean qua majuni munise sa kwa no way mamia a betoma a betoma coma super. And no chinun so no se say and yeah mamma ya drink a cramai. Uh yes rabba and say wabe said ye and a bosh and never share ye say or ba my hua to ye no. Uh ya won't to yin yanku see de but kakre ubiti mi a ye ma and ye mumu agu gua my no and no wayan is an kamipe. I'm looking forward for the government to make enough funds to reconstruct the roads in Ashanti region. Almost everywhere in Ashanti region, all the roads are bad. I mean, our cars are broken down, and even when you call taxis to come to your area, they wouldn't come because of the road. All the roads are bad. So I'm expecting the government to make more allocation of funds to improve the road network in Ashanti region. The government to talk about the pension scheme, and then also as a government worker, I expect him to consider government workers, especially after our pension, you should um, uh, consider this uh, affordable housing. So after the pension, we can get a place to uh, rest our head after the long service. Yeah.
Now, the finance minister, Ken Oforiata, will be seeking approval to spend some 60.8 billion Ghana cities when he appears before parliament to present the 2018 budget and economic policy of government. Sources close to GH1 business can confirm. The amount is needed to anchor government's agenda of moving the economy beyond the reliance of foreign support or aid. The budget is expected to focus on ensuring macroeconomic stability, transforming agriculture and industry, strengthening social protection and inclusion, building on economic and social infrastructure, and reforming public service delivery institutions. The minister will do this by targeting a lean fiscal deficit of below 5%, a growth rate of more than 7%, and a positive primary balance that can support the new thinking that the country should not borrow to refinance debt. The target for 2018 will seek to build upon those set in this year's budget, which sources in government say have virtually been achieved. Analysts believe that the 2018 budget, which will be woven around exploiting the potential of agricultural sector, would aim to streamline fiscal slippages in a manner that improves the business environment to help unleash the full potential of the private sector. Senior economist with the IFS, Dr. Said Boache spoke to GH1 Business on critical areas that he thinks the 2018 budget needs to address. Studies over studies have shown that without industrialization, long-term and sustainable development cannot be achieved. And you can achieve that through these lo local investors, local industrialists. And if in the free trade zone, foreigners have given all these incentives, meanwhile, if you truly want to assess the benefits, Maybe I cannot sit down here and say there's no benefit, but the benefit will not be as great as the, the uh, domestic investors. Stay tuned to GH1 TV. We'll be bringing you a live coverage of the 2018 budget reading in Parliament today. Now let's do some other stories. There's an easy calm in Upekuma, a suburb of Kaswa, and surrounding communities following series of alleged murder cases reported within the last two weeks. The latest which occurred on Monday is that of a 24-year-old receptionist who was raped and shot to death. Now family of another alleged murder case which happened last week are demanding swift investigations into the death of a 40-year-old woman as the fear of living in the community Heightings. Insecurity within Kaswa has been heightening in the last few weeks. A community in the Wutusenya East Municipality of the Central Region, Kaswa has over the years been experiencing cases of robbery and murder. The situation was linked to the nature of the community, which was a new settlement for some residents in Accra and other parts of the country. As Kaswa and its environs began to develop into a habitable settlement, cases of brutality by land guards were rife. The menace appeared to have died out until a fresh case was reported a week ago. A commercial bus driver was allegedly murdered at Opekuma by land guards. Aside a land guard menace, there has been recent developments regarding robbery and rape. A 24-year-old woman working as a receptionist at Peace Gardens Guest House at Kaswa in the Wutusenya East Municipality of the Central Region was on Monday allegedly raped and killed. Another woman, 40-year-old and mother of four, who is a resident at Akoto Junction, a suburb of Kaswa, last Tuesday was also found lifeless a few meters from her house on her way to the mail. Marking one week since that incident, her brother, Emmanuel Asante, narrates how the incident occurred. <laughs> Now, when a fukakra, to an adjacent wall, training men or ho, no washe. 
to a train a minute and I who in a pine and then in Pabua and in the Duku and to one on the Asha says our tantium. Say a moon or honey pine or a month for dear woo, mumro, mumro to one anna, a month for fifteen room. Fence will be war, rest a big free fence on the moon receive her. No besides, I day, I day, I day. Nanny brand new wounds are no color saint. Yea, I dream, Cosso say. The deceased sister Felicia Santua is yet to come to terms with the loss. Residents of Opekuma and its surrounding towns now live in fear and want security to be beefed up in their communities. And dress me, me pee, and I'm sassy me a bent before three o'clock. And I'm with fear, dear me a crown, and me, yes, and me beefy because my person, dear Bessamia, a be a be better to me, they say, sir, by any sale, or my bamboo being cosso, ye, Raham. Who do you want, sir, my papa, papa, any free no entry into sonor? A driver, a day, yes, and a year, so cabaco, so a busy war, or my boy, and a day when you are quine, a gane. Meanwhile, the increasing cases of crime in Kaswa and surrounding areas is a concern to the municipal chief executive of Ewutu Shena East, Michael Esuman. He says efforts are being made to tackle the security lapses head on. We realize that the personnel in Kaswa for police is woefully inadequate. It's just too small. And then number two, the resources for the police to work with also is extremely inadequate. If I say lack, it means there's none at all. But what we have is so, so, so inadequate. And so the operating hit had relied so much on getting the SWAT unit of the headquarters, who, as I speak to you, they are in town. And then we had police officers from less pressured areas like Suedro, Winneba, Mankesim, Kipkos. They also come and support the situation in Kaswa. With the festive season fast approaching, and its associated crime-related cases, the police must intensify surveillance in crime-prone areas like Kaswa and its surrounding towns. Now, President Ekufuado has reiterated the need to encourage women's participation in business and politics in Africa if the continent hopes to deal with the myriad challenges confronting it. Delivering the keynote address of the launch of Agenda and Development Initiative for Africa program in Accra, the president said Africa will do itself a disservice if women are left out of its developmental efforts. President Ekufuado insisted that the continent and the rest of the world ought to give a blanket protection to all women to ensure that their rights become the bedrock of equal and social justice. The duty of the world in its entirety to extend a blanket protection to all women and to ensure that their rights become the bedrock for equality and social justice. As AU Gender Champion, my goal to this end is to help mobilize political support to help transform Africa into an exemplary continent where sound policies and solid programs would have, by the end of the day, successfully elevated the existential situation of women. Outgoing President of Liberia, Ellen Johnson Salif, charged President Akufuado to do everything possible to promote the interest of women and identify the many women who need just a little push to be able to fulfill their ambitions in business and politics. Mr. President, Nana, you're taking on that responsibility to promote women in politics and in business as evidence by this meeting today. We will look to you to lead that effort to help us to identify those many, many women today who stand on the threshold just waiting to make the last big jump because they've already established their leadership in business and in politics. 
In July 2017, President Nana Adodankwe Kufuado was appointed the African Union leader for gender and development by the chairperson of the African Union, His Excellency Alpha Conde, who is also the president of the Republic of Guinea. This appointment and recognition has necessitated the creation of the Gender and Development Initiative for Africa to help execute all gender-related matters in the AU Agenda 2063. The Dean of the Environmental Science Department of the Presbyterian University College at Equapim in the Eastern Region, Dr. Edward Riafi, has called on government to, as a matter of urgency, deal with the rates of depletion of wildlife species in the country. According to him, the situation has led to extinction of very important species and believes the time has come for immediate action to be taken. Ghana was well known for its rich and abundant flora and fauna species. The country had several wildlife species, including leopard, hyena, buffalo, elephant, wild hog and antelope among others. However, several years down the line, these wildlife species are constantly being threatened, putting them on the verge of extinction. Interestingly, depleting wildlife population in the country is largely being blamed for this. The Atiwa Forest Reserve in the eastern region has often been cited for the sale of illegal game known in Ghanaian local parlance as bushmeat in the full glare of law enforcement agencies. GH1 News interaction with some bushmeat patrons confirmed this assertion. However, the Dean of the Environmental Science Department of the Presbyterian University College at Ekwampem, Edward Wiafe, noted that it is about time government tackled the menace head on. If we sit down on concern, then the next generation will get up and blame us. So we have to, we have to conserve these species. So we approach um, critical ecosystem partnership for funding, and they gave us 44,000 US dollars to embark on this project. We started the first phase by counting um, all the monkeys in. Okay, three points forest reserve, Atiwa Ring Forest Reserve, and Tanofin Forest Reserve. Now, if you're planning to be pregnant, then you must make it a habit to make regular visits to the doctor three months before taking seed. Now, that's according to the National Association of Registered Midwives, Ghana. This, the president of the association believes, will go a long way to avert the high cases of maternal and infant mortality in the country. Hajarid Wana was speaking to the African Union campaign on accelerated uh, reduction of maternal mortality cases. The campaign is aimed at creating awareness on the need for planning pregnancies with medical practitioners. The campaign also provided a health screening opportunity for residents in the Gas South municipality here in Accra. Speaking during the exercise at the municipality hospital in Accra, President of the National Association of Registered Midwives Ghana, Hajia Redwana Ajay Amwakon, said very few Ghanaian mothers take antenatal issues seriously. She lamented their failure to consult qualified health workers like midwives for care before pregnancy. Very few women take the antenatal clinic seriously, which we recommend them. And that is what we want all women in Ghana, whether you are from Ghana, whether you are from us, so long as you are residing in Ghana, we want them to come to our midwives, to sit with the midwives three months before you get pregnant. Hajia Redwana fingered sedentary lifestyles of some expectant mothers as a major contributor to the high rate of maternal deaths in the country. She encouraged some mothers to stop resorting to prayer centers in order to save their lives and that of their babies. The most important, they forget or they leave the nutritious food aspect down. That is taking green leaves. Kontomre, Boko Boko, Alefo, Suaka, eh, Kwaunsusa, and all that, and Okro. Some of them go to the, the priests and the other people 
for medicine and for supervision or whatever it is and they tell them don't take okru don't take palm nut don't take egg don't take this forbidding them to take all the nutritious food that will help them and the baby the priests and the uh, 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 those uh, other people who manage the pregnant women that they should do away with those uh, education Ghana's premier university, the University of Ghana, has launched the 27th African Human Rights Motor Court Competition. The competition seeks to empower law students by creating a platform for them to debate over current human rights issues relevant to Africa. Shin, which started over 20 years, has seen numerous law students and lecturers across the African continent participate, according to the dean of the university. Many participants in the moot competition over the years have become beacons of human rights in various countries. We at the University of Ghana very much appreciate the importance of exposure of students to the real world outside the lecture rooms. And I believe that the All African Human Rights Competition, which has been regularly organized for over a decade, provides one such opportunity for students to debate on important human rights concerns affecting the continent. He stated that the competition will bring together students and lecturers from over 75 law faculties from all over Africa. Speaking during the launch, Professor Franz Vejon indicated that the program seeks to encourage law students to show active interest in human rights. The main purpose of the MOOT turned to creating a new generation of lawyers who will actually be there, ready, inspired, and capacitated to bring cases to the African Court on Human and People's Rights. So the role of the MOOT, would, we could say, is now more inspirational and educational. According to Aniela Alote, a representative of the University of Ghana for the competition, the team is working hard to ensure Ghana wins the 27th edition. Because the competition is mainly human rights, we're moving to our notes and mainly class participation and hopefully examinations as well because most of them would feature exactly what the competition might border on. One of the winners for the 26th edition shared her experience with the news team. The competition was very exciting but uh, it doesn't just take, you know, getting up one day and then going straight to the competition. The preparatory work and the groundwork that must be done before you get to the actual competition is very tough and very, very interesting to say the least. You have to put in a lot of effort. There were a lot of classes and lectures that we missed in order to put in all the work that we had to before we could make the cuts to even pass the preliminaries and go to the finals. Ghana has had the opportunity to partake in this competition five times and has won on four occasions. We'll bring you business news after this. Now, the Ghana Investments Promotion Center and the Savannah Accelerator Development Authority, SADA, have signed a memorandum of understanding to facilitate investment promotion in the northern region. The agreement between the two agencies will enable them to collaborate to show multiple investments within the SADA zone in a bid to increase the influx of foreign direct investments into the region. Development authorities have a crucial role in creating and promoting investment opportunities through the implementation of their planning, resource mobilization, development coordination and implementation on infrastructure projects, particularly under the Infrastructure of Poverty Eradication Program. It is for this purpose that the Development Authority together with GIPC have effectively collaborated to optimization of investments which analysts say 
is a step towards the right direction. Once the area opens up, job opportunities are going to open up significantly, um, particularly um, even if it's just in agriculture. The value chain of agriculture alone creates significant jobs. The construction industry alone will create significant jobs because as it opens up and transportation opens up, opportunities and investors go there, then you need homes, you need schools, you need hospitals. All those are very important investment opportunities that we are looking at. The chief executive officer of SADA, Charles Abugri, says the initiative is to maximize its potential and making concerted efforts to reach out to local and international investors who have an interest in conducting business in the region. This is actually a continuation of uh, a cooperation that has been going on in GRTC. Not long ago, we had uh, a number of senior officials from GRTC here at SADA helping us to understand what it takes to support the drive uh, for investment into our country. The Minister of Energy, Boachie Jaco, has hinted that Ghana will supply 100 megawatts of 